thank you for coming this Saturday morning. You could be elsewhere, but here you are. So either you like coffee a lot or you really want to know this stuff. So um, we came down last year because I got a call mid-September last year from Bradley. And I said, who is Bradley? So what happened was, again, I was in publishing back in the day. And back then, I knew people who were in publishing. And there's a publication called Publishers Weekly. It is sort of the Bible of publishing. And I knew those guys back then. And then the time came and time went. And I wasn't in publishing anymore. I sold the company that I ran in 1999. And then I retired, I thought. And it didn't work real well because I just couldn't sit down. So I started another company, and I was up in Nantucket, which isn't a bad place to start a new company, but I wasn't doing anything that I was really good at. You know, I had some grand ideas about what I was going to do, and I ended up being a handyman. You know, that wasn't my idea, but that's sort of what it devolved into, because that's what happened. I thought, you know, rich people are going to, my idea was I was going to hire people, and they were going to work for me. There's nobody up there to hire, so I can assure you, you do not want to hire me as a handyman. But they called me and they said, you know, we're doing what's, I think they called it the second chapter or some such thing. They wanted to go to the guys who weren't publishing anymore and see if they're dead or what they were doing. So they got hold of me. We happen to be doing this together. Sue is also not in publishing. Her background, she's an FIT graduate, and her background is in uh, fashion design. Pencil, paper, fashion. If any of you ladies ever had one of these things where there was a, you know, your shoulders hanging out, she was one of the pioneers of that, I think. Is that true? <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> so anyway, in that article, I was quoted as using my book's author, and Brad is a bit of an IBA troll. So he found me the day after this thing was published and said, we're about to have the first ever iBooks author uh, conference in Nashville. Have you ever been to Nashville? I was in publishing. We all, we, it was basically a map company, and we had a collection of Bible maps. And if you know anything about Nashville, this is Bible publishing country. And back in the day, they would put Bible maps into the Bibles, and we actually supplied printed maps. So yeah, I've been to Nashville before, but it was a long time ago. So. He said, you got to come on down. I said, Yahoo, let's do it. There's a wee hoo. <coughs> so I said, what are we going to talk about, Bradley? And he said, just tell your story. So Sue and I said to each other, what are we going to say? What is our story? So what we decided to do was say, what does go first in this lovely young world? And we didn't know. You know what does come first? Sometimes it's the egg, and sometimes it's the chicken. So fast forward, what we're going to try to do today is tell you who we are, what we're doing, how we're doing it, and what, how you can do it too. This is, you just heard graduate school height. This is kindergarten height. This is where to start. Because neither of us have any uh, background in anything technological. The olden days. That was me 26 years ago. CNN was um, interviewing me, so that was a quick shot. This is, <laughs> is Sue, both in a younger year. But on the how we got here part, back in 2008, our family made a decision to go with the Secret Santa concept. Are you familiar with that? Christmas time, instead of going out and doing a mall crawl, you pick a name and you get that person to do some creative work for. And so Sue got her mom. Her mom had five kids. One of them is right here. She's the oldest. And she's got four younger brothers. And so she decided to create a book by hand with pencils and paper. This was the very first publication of ours. This is the one and only copy that ever existed. I think that's true, right? And it was originally called, in her mind, Five Flowers, because, you know, five kids. Her mom was the, the, um, the mom of these five flowers. And this is the blow up of, you know, a couple of pages from here. That was in 2008. And here's Sue again <laughs> at about 10 years old. So if you do the math, you can figure out about where we are in this. We're retired. 
so this, the next year, uh, Gary, the son over here, created her next favorite human being. He's now seven, and Gary has him playing chess and doing all kinds of crazy brain things. He's a math teacher, if any of you saw him yesterday. Uh, he's a pretty intense, pretty smart guy. He was supposed to be in jail today, <laughs> but they let him out to, to come to this conference, and what that really is, is he is the, uh, I don't know what the exact title is, Gary, but Gary teaches. Um, Inside the um, New Jersey Maximum Security Prisons with Rutgers teaching uh, college education, reform, and correctional education. So about three times a week, he's locked in a room with 20 murderers. <laughs> we make sure he gets back every day. We hope he does, but. <laughs> But it was for this young fellow that the first, the second paper book was created. And it was, jump in, I don't want to just. Instead of H Y P E, I have W I F E, of course, I look it up. But again, she is an illustrator, sort of not by training, but she just does it. She's done it for her life. The first <coughs> book that we ever created in iBook software. Was anybody here at the iBook software? Great, okay. The only way I can talk to you about height is how it looks through iBook software, because I don't know anything about reflexive or any of that kind of stuff. I tried it and I said I need to rely on Jacob for that. So the first paper book in terms of a timeline was 2008. That's how long we've been in this end of the publishing business. Yeah. 2010 was the second book. And then, as an aside, I gotta tell you, I love gadgets. I love gadgets. Sue is a prolific reader. And she'd come home and do books. And I love gadgets. I love working in wood. So she'd have these books and she'd get three or four or five a week. So I had to keep building bookshelves all around the house, all around the top of the house, bottom of the house, vertically through the books. I said, Sue, you got to stop this. And then I learned about an iPad. And I said, this is going to work great. I'm going to buy her an iPad. She can download the books. She doesn't, you know, more books load. It doesn't get heavier. And I think she's probably not going to like it, so guess who's going to get the iPad? <laughs> she liked it. I never got to see it. <laughs> so the next year, um, 2012, um, it was time for me to have my knees replaced. So I stopped working because I started working again because I can't sit still. And I was going to be in the hospital for a while. I said, what a great way to get an iPad. I need an iPad soon. You have one, I want one, but she had an iPad one. She needed an iPad two here, I guess is what we got. So we went out and got ourselves a Macintosh, we got ourselves each a new iPad. So she was then the girl with two iPads. Mm -hmm. um, hello, hello? You got it? The idea was, let's, let's use the iPad now to perhaps do some drawing, take those paper books, learn art programs um, through the apps, the, the drawing apps, and do the artwork and turn it into books. Uh, we had just discovered I was software, we started playing there, and by 2013, I had done my uh, 13 digital books. The, the first digital flower book uh, was like a, you know, uh, homage to my mother, um, and I will, Always have warm feelings for that book. I don't know that at all. I, I'll truly it's ever animate free. it, and it'll always be free as a, as a gift to my mom. And that was what the cover was after I turned it into artwork uh, done digitally. But you notice the book starts with how about, and the way we came up with how about is Cash, which is this now seven year old fellow, loves Grandma, and Grandma, Grandma, Grandma. She acts like a kid. You think when she's with kids that she's only three, she's just bigger. But it was, how about we go dig up worms? How about we go for a hike? How about, how about, how about? So I said, Sue, what a great start for a series. It's the How About Kids book series. So this was the first one. And if you look at the art quality, we were beginning to get better because that was the first cover that she did on the iPad. So she learned how to take her drawing skills and make it electronic. I was thrilled. So this is the one of the first pictures of, you know, that's mom and those are the five flowers. So again, it was an homage to her, to her, um, to her mom. And we were playing with, I don't even 
Five were five were watched with. So that was the, the thought. You know, we'll do that. That's for boys. Um, it was to, it was going to be a read along, and you know because it was a multi touch. It was it wasn't called I don't think multi touch back then, but we wanted to play with all the gadgetry. So we look, I learned a little bit about um, GarageBand and how to use GarageBand and how to put sounds in and you know the widgets. And so they began to have sounds, but they weren't really that thrilling to us. Like we were more interested in the visual side of things. So the second book, which was the one that was done for cash, we said, hey, you know, we've got an iPhone, we can take pictures of things, it'd be really cool, we'll have photography, and you can uh, learn about text boxes. Again, this is kindergarten 101 in terms of anything. Um, we, we picked up, when we bought the Mac in 2012, we got the very first edition of iBooks off, and we were thrilled it was free, and we could play with it. So, you know, we're, we learned things really slowly. We just, or specifically me, I just click around and play. I sort of like playing. Well, one of the things we also discovered is that because the, the picture of the book that appears on the shelf is just a little tiny thumbprint. Originally, when oh, yeah. I did the, the cover to the leaf book, I was doing it in, I, I did a photograph and then I would Photoshop draw on top of um, on top of the photograph, and throughout that book originally, there were mostly photographs that I drew on top of, you know, faces on the leaves, uh, and it was too green. The entire book was too green. It looked great at full size and it looked awful at small size. So one of the lessons is keep your covers clear and clean. Forget all the beautiful stuff that you can see at full size. If they don't like it at this size, they're not going to buy it. So lesson number one was in. Let's make it cleaner and clearer, and I can't really tell you what the numbers are, but it made a major difference. In well, how also, my son, with the with my grandchild, my first grandchild, had said, make it playful, you know? Go, forget the photography. Go back to drawing and use your playful sense of drawing because these are for little kids, and that's what the kids react to. So I, I moved away from the photography on top of on top of the photography and just did the artwork, which is what I enjoy anyway. So we made what we call back pages. At the end of each book, we put in uh, what you can also buy from us on the, you know, on the iBook store, and we hot link it in, we put in all the uh, whatever, you know, whatever <coughs> the app gives us in terms of the code. So this was our first version of back pages. This was 2014, and you can see it looked a little bit crude, but we were long ago. And so, this was our approximate timeline of uh, books because I can tell you this woman is a prolific reader. She's a prolific creator of art. She's got this new gadget. She just throws stuff out. So she created that the other day. So this was sort of our timeline. This is what the How About series now looks like. In fact, I'd like to congratulate you. She won the, what was the category? <coughs> Inclusive Children's uh, Book. So that's a fast forward. And there's also, this is our the newest series, it's called Pinky and Dirty. Uh, it's a funny little neighborhood interaction between, you know, the boy and the little girl and all the things that happen there. Uh, it's the newest series, but it's the oldest storyline because when she was putting Gary to bed when he was a lot smaller than he is now, she would just make this stuff up. And so when it came time to say, let's create Pinky and Dirty, I said, I don't know what they look like. And she just told them stories because they'd go to sleep. And so anyway, this is what Pinky and Dirty looks like. But she also loves fairies. She believes in fairies. She <laughs> thinks they're real. And mermaids, the same thing. But one of the first books that we created in How About Series was How About a Fairy. But then she started making more fairy books. She said, hold it, we got another series here. We can't have too many fairy books. So what was originally How About a Fairy is down the lower right-hand side, which is now a garden fairy. We had to republish it and all that stuff. But so this, there's three separate categories, three kind of different kinds of art, but they keep coming pouring off of her iPad. Then last year, we came down to Nashville, and we thought we're just going to sit around and watch and see what happens, because you know, never been here before, don't certainly have much experience in this kind of stuff. But I, uh, when I was down here, I'm kind of happy to say I got certified. I'm an IBACT WD with this station. So that's it's like, well, what am I going to do with this? This is the boss. This is my only client. Well, he's the only. So, so just after Christmas last year, we downloaded it. Was you know for fifty bucks? I figured I'm going to try this because I love gadgetry. And 
I asked Jonathan last year, I said, do I get the Pro or should I get the, you know, the plain version, whatever that's called. He said, I don't think you're gonna need the Pro, you know, just get it, see if you like it. So about 10 days later, I said, I need the Pro, this is really fun. <laughs> so I can tell you that the best hundred bucks I ever spent was to get the Pro. So, but again, a lot of the things that Hype can do, you know, with all the stuff that Jake was talking about, <clears throat> iBooks Author does for you. So again, I'm using iBooks Author as the presentation piece here. So in terms of Bradley saying, what can you do with iBooks Author? This you can do with <coughs> iBooks Author. It's, it's in front of you as a presentation platform. So it's been nine months <laughs> since, uh, since we started that little process. So we can get this thing going. So what we did is we took the books that existed and we started retroactively animating them. So as you can see, we kept on animating because hype was like Christmas every morning. I'd get up and I'd go on the train. It's like, now I get to open more presents. I'm a gadget guy, I'm a tools guy. I'm rebuilding in the middle of a five-year total restoration of a 1964 Corvette. I like tools. But I get dirty. You don't get dirty with hype. You, know, you just get to play. So this was one of the... Uh, one of the titles of How About is How About a Spider, and this was one of the original pieces of art. Intentionally kind of crude and cute and any comments on this? Well, also, one of the things we were attempting was rhyming. Yes. <laughs> that was it's like the same song he rhymes in the book. So originally, all the books had um, verse rhyming, which is very difficult. If you've ever tried it, you know how say something with a picture, you do a picture and then you want to explain what it is in a rhyme, tricky, tricky. And we would agonize um, for hours. And then when we redid them, this book was re-engineered, adding a lot of hype. So we tried to not damage the story because there's still a possibility it's going to appear in the paper. So we wanted to make sure that the hype added some excitement and some personality and some value but it's not required. But again, we have a, it's an extensive group of uh, test people, we call them grandchildren, and we put them in front of these things and we like to see what they do so that we can judge, is it too fast, is it too slow, is it stupid, do they leave it, and are they interested or not? So we notice that they like speed, they like noise, they like uh, you know flashing things. Um, so <coughs> why do I have this here? I think because you're going to Okay, so Pinky and Dirty. Uh, this is Pinky, on the left was the original Pinky, and on the right, it's still Pinky, but there's a little bit of stuff going on here. Well, Hype gave us the opportunity to introduce a little bit more character to the characters. Now they have a personality, thanks to Hype. And this is Dirty, again, the page on the right replaces the, the, um, the one on the left, but you can see the stuff going on. Dirty earns his name. He likes being dirty. And so, again, the little pinky stuff, and she went from just being static to spinning around, and we're adding things, and each one of these things, these musical notes or uh, her spinning, is an element. And I learned about what elements are. They're like two-dimensional boxes, and you can do things with them. You can make them spin. So here, Dirty's eating pizza. Over here, Dirty's eating pizza, too. But as the kids watch this, they want to spend more time. Part of the idea is to keep these kids occupied. You, know, you want to sit them down and you want them to learn that books or an iPad is a cool thing to do. Uh, if you have any technical problems ever, start with the three-year-olds and see what they can do because they know more than I do. I can <laughs> promise you that. But it's, you know, it's supposed to add some personality and fun. So again, the left is what used to be. This is what I keep playing with. It's, again, I take out a toolbox and see what can I make happen. So uh, Jonathan, I. He's, these guys are so helpful, Jonathan and Daniel. They call them up, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And they say, well, try this. And so one of the things that, that uh, Jonathan said, learn to use scenes, where you can jump from one scene to the other. So what you're watching here is uh, one scene, and you know, dirty spins around, and then it switches on the scene, and he does something else. So that's a third scene. They just rapidly switch. And there's ways to tell it how fast you want it to go. Do you want it to, let's see, you call it a question. Transition pattern. I don't know anything about it. So, <laughs> so then, um, this this is the intro to uh, one of the pinkies and dirties. It's called, uh, you know, they go on a search.
And so I took the thing you just saw me create and added the background scene. And then there's Pinky. We had Pinky. She's on a pogo stick this time. And they're always you know, knocking heads. They're boys and girls. It's the mini version of Mars and Venus. So it's so much fun to play with. But how did we get there? Well, when we started creating the book that ultimately won the, the prize, um, it was a how about book. It was, you know, how about a starfish? because it was about a starfish. But what we did, because of what we told you about thumbnails and stuff, I said, we've got to redo this. This is too plain. Um, so what I did is I took the elements that were in the book, the starfish and the creds and all this kind of stuff, and I built that in height in about five minutes. And you can see that it's just crisper. And I think we will do the resolution. I set the resolution for the iPad resolution. And just automatically, it becomes crisper. So. My new go-to when I'm doing almost anything is hype. But Sue began being prolific. She started sending me characters, and more characters, and more characters. You know, again, elements. All these just became elements, and like, and then scenes. So I think, what in God's name am I going to do with all this stuff? Because it just kept pouring out. She sent one an hour at times. Uh, she'll go downstairs in our home, which is our you know international headquarters. It's, uh, Third bedroom on the left is the, the main thing which is happening. Mm -hmm. Is that your house? <laughs> it's where I it's where I live. Gary expecting to move in with his uh, <laughs> Okay. Um, so what I did, another use for iBooks author, is I needed a place to stick all these elements she gets that you know she kept sending. So um, I, I make a chapter per book. So this is the beginnings of, this is, this, these are the chapters, and I don't know if you can see this down there, but the Elements book now, we started you know, about a year ago, it's over 400 pages of just stuff. So I've divided it up into Under the Sea, and you can see here that, you know, pulling it down, I'm not going to focus on each one, but she just keeps sending this stuff. So I had to put it someplace, so each chapter is the parts and pieces of, of the book. So this is from, you know, the one that's now called The Undersea Adventure. And the same thing is true for Pinky and Dirty, where, I don't know if I'm going to have time to go through all that, but at any rate, a great way to use, uh, another way to use iBooks Author is to use it to store stuff in your art. Because uh, a lot of it's reusable. You know, one of the great advantages of having things digital is you can, you like the pizza that you saw that Dirty had, this is the pizza that we really made for Gary's math book. So, you know, part of the idea is to be able to reuse things. But, Sue wanted me to, to animate. This was going to be an undersea adventure. So she said, you know, it's a pretty turtle. So there's the turtle that she wanted to ask me to put it through this pretty scene. So I said, OK, let's do it. So what we got was pretty silly. Uh, it is it's not a political statement, but we believe in transparency. <laughs> <laughs> but what you can also do is these things you can run them backwards, you can run them forward, you can stop them, or you can start them all over again. You tell that kid, to a kid one time, and they know how to do it. So I've, I've tried to make all this stuff you know, interesting and, and all that, but we needed to get rid of that box. So here's the turtle without the box, but as you can see, sort of floating along, and they don't, they don't uh, you know, really go like that. So I said, Sue, we need to break this up so that things can rub against each other. So we, she broke up the turtle. You say something, huh? All right, so this is, the, this is the control box. This is the cockpit. This is what you see when you're beginning to animate. The part which is now white is sort of like the stage. And then left of the stage, right of the stage, above and below the stage are, in effect, places that you can put stuff. But if you hold down the command button, I don't know if you can see it from here, but it shows you the midpoint, which is the rotation point. That rotation point is movable. So as you slide the rotation point around, the point around which the thing uh, goes changes. So I took the left flipper and the right flipper, <coughs> and I labeled them down here. When you drag something in, I highly suggest that you name it right away, because as you begin to add more and more <coughs> things, you know, it says pasted number one, pasted number two, it's like that, you lose track. So suggestion, label it right away, because with four, I would get lost. A couple of these things, I've got a couple hundred layers, which you'll see a little bit later on. But I'm trying to make the, um, you know, the, the turtle swim like a turtle. What also is kind of cool about height is on the left-hand side, you can see that things are in order. The things on the top are on the top. Every 
element has its own layer. So, so in order to have um, the flippers under the shell, you just drag it down. You can also hit a button up top, which is backwards, or you move it to the back. But that's the control that you have over the various elements. Um, over the left hand side makes it easier. You see it's the left flipper. You, just, you want it to be beneath the shell, so you just drag it down and it takes you where you want to go. So I was, a uh, long time ago, I could swim in water. Now I sort of try to stay out of it. But I remember swimming, you know, if you're like this, and you go like this, your head goes up. So when the flippers are down, the head is up, and vice versa. I just did it in the mirror. So, <laughs> but you can see that I want to see how far the head is going to go back. So I did the, um, the spacing above the shell so I could see how far it was, and I dropped it back behind the shell. And this is our beginnings of the, uh, you know, the turtle swim, but he's not going anywhere. So we decided, let's see him go across the page. So he goes across the page, but there's no backward scenery. So here he is, we hope. Now he's swimming. And he's beginning to look like something. And he's just four little pieces of green. And it all has to do with your rotation points and uh, you know, how fast you want it to happen. The timeline at the bottom, you want it to take six seconds or 12 seconds or whatever to go across the page. So the, those blue lines are what are called animations. It's the difference in, in either in, in any characteristic, whether it's rotation or opacity or size, because you can change all of these things and you can group things together. So you can also see that the, the trajectory, the path of the, of the animal, in this case, you can just drag the um, motion path around so you can have it not only going straight, but you can have it going up and down around in circles or whatever you want it to do. So um, over to the right here, on the right hand side, the inspector. So I can see three little white spots, a little below, halfway down. Those are the rotation in degrees of the X, Y, and Z uh, axes. So you can make things turn or spin by either turning or spinning the element or typing in the number of degrees you want it to, to go, like you'll see animals in a minute that are spinning. If you want it to go around three times, you multiply 360 times three, and you just plug that number in, and it knows to go exactly three times around. So this is the beginning, the character introduction for the, uh, the book <coughs> that's featured out there, you know, The Undersea Adventure. And you'll see they're each doing different things, and that was because, again, I needed to put these things somewhere, and they all do different things. So I said, okay, that's what that means. Spinning it on the x-axis means that. Spinning it on the y-axis means this. So it was all just play. I uh, hate to tell you that I just love to play, but I found an age that I liked, and I stayed there, and it was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you see, um, you know, they do different things. You can see the corners in front of the other. You can see the eyes moving on the clam down there. Uh, this is a jellyfish. But it was a way to say, okay, these are the characters in the book. This is behind the scenes, what's going on, what happened to them. You can see they're all piled up on the left, they're all piled up on the right, there's bubbles down under it, and there's a, uh, a dropping curtain above it. So this is a stage, pretend you're a stage manager, you got stage left, stage right, stage up, stage down, and the blue lines again are indicating changes in something. The crab is rotating, um, the that's a, that's a, what's called a symbol, the shrimp is a symbol, uh, which read about it because I'm not that good at it, but it's basically you can create a, a, an element with a, a bunch of motions that will remember itself so you can drag it from animation to animation and it'll do the exact same thing. So this is what it looks like when you're in charge, when you're in the cockpit. Sue loves mermaids. And Why? Everybody loves mermaids. <laughs> And I love outdoor showers. I had a house on Nantucket. When I moved back to New Jersey, I needed an outdoor shower. I said, so I'm gonna build an outdoor shower. She said, great, no problem. <laughs> so this is my outdoor shower in suburban New Jersey. But Sue had it, you know, she, her palette is everywhere on the house. There's a sun about this big on the garage. There's a sunflower about 15 feet tall in the back. So. She ran out of canvases, so this was the, the outdoor shower. But that uh, mermaid on the right became the mermaid that I, I got to animate. So this is my home, my 
home place. This is my office. It's about 12 steps from my bedroom. Um, but I decided if we're going to do a mermaid, we have to do what a mermaid does. And I couldn't find any mermaids. So I, I got to the Olympic Committee. I got to Michael Phelps and said, I want to see Michael Phelps swim because if you've ever seen him, he's serpentine. And I figured, you know, mermaids must be serpentine. They live under there. So we looked at the side view. We found just on the web uh, him swimming like this and noticed where, where he bends, you know, where are these hinges. So I said, Sue, we need to break her in pieces. <laughs> so, and um, a couple of years ago, I had my knees replaced. Don't do it for the fun of it, but it was, it was worth it in the end. But the doctor gave me this. This is called a goniometer. It tells you how far your knee bends. You see, it's sort of see-through. But what it does, it's, a, it's like a circle with a rivet in the middle. And it's around that that the thing rotates. So if you can envision these pieces overlapping one another so that they can rotate, you keep them round so that all you see is the motion. That was the concept that we built into this. So again, now you're behind the scenes, you're watching things happen. We pretty much go back past this. And here she is. And she becomes a group. You take all those pieces, you move them about. You can also group it and flip it. So I don't have to build it twice. I build it once, and I can have her going in either direction. So I don't know who had a need for her. No. Mermaid. No. She is a girl with no name. So what, this is just one of the scenes from the book itself. And you can see we can change the size of the uh, starfish and the seahorse. Here comes the turtle. They jump on board because the turtle is their bus. So they go around and you know they're going off the sea and now they come back in again. They're bigger now. That's following a, a curve that I just pulled in by dragging it. A lot of fish going on here. Back to Pinky and Dirty. We went to the Olympics for the mermaid. We went to the Olympics to find Usain Bolt because Dirty likes to run. And I used to run track. That was where I wrecked my knee to begin with. And so I figured, you know, running. So I created Dirty Running. I said, well, let's see how Usain does it, because he runs faster than most. And I noticed, I don't know if you can see it, but none of their knees, none of these world-class runners, are more than about 90 degrees. So I said, I've got to change what he's doing. So now you'll see his knees are going like Usain Bolt. And again, I can make him go backwards. This is what kids love to do. They'll stay on this page for way longer because they can play with it, they can make it go faster and slower. Pinky and Dirty have this relationship, sort of like maybe a married couple, where she's talking and he's not hearing a lot. So how did we do that? <coughs> blah, 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 blah. So the way you do this is you take a, you, you can create a text box. You can stretch it any direction you want to. I just cut and paste it, you know, blah times one. I, Copied it, copied it again, copied it again. So I don't know how many times blah is on that, that moving text box behind it, but that's how that happens. It's a real simple thing. Sue gave me the art. She made the, whatever you call them, the word clouds, uh, transparent, and blah, blah goes just across behind it. This is dirty. dirty. I mean, this is pinky. <laughs> so we had her blowing bubbles, and and see what happens when it pops. So again, this, this is just a scene from the book itself. But we weren't doing enough, you know? We had, we were only working about 12 hours a day because I didn't want to stop. It was just, I can't, I needed more. So Gary, however, meanwhile, is writing a serious math book. And I said, Gary, this is a serious math book. Obviously, it needs animation. He said, I don't think so. This is his book. He was the finalist with this book. And his concept of this is knowledge. Correct me if I'm wrong here, Gary. Knowledge is like the web. It's not linear. It's web-like. So his symbol is a spider. And this is one of the scenes from his book. And the idea is just you get the idea that everything is interconnected. So Gary's book uses hype, uses animations in order to attempt, at least, to take concepts that may be complex and may be deep and turn them really simple. And you saw the earlier one with the chicken and the egg. So these are five of the animations that appear in his book. And Gary, I don't know if you want to make any comments about what each of them means, but it's a 
thumb flipping a coin, it's a pizza dividing up two different ways, one is equality and one is equity. So does it make more sense to give the big guy half the pie? Or is it fairer to give everybody the same size piece? And you know, he would have to explain the math thinking behind it, but the idea was to take concepts and just make them really clean and clear. Um, the guy on the left was lifting the planet. The spork on the on the right side, again, grabbed him afterwards and said, what in God's name are you thinking that you're putting all this stuff in here? But again, he took concepts that, are, that had to do with social justice and made it simple to say. Our, gen our general favorite is the bottom middle, which is the monkey. You probably heard this, you had an unlimited number of monkeys, an unlimited number of typewriters, how long would it take to write Shakespeare? So he's typing his, you know, his way through, just being a monkey typing, like most monkeys would do. <laughs> so, this. so we're looking back at, at this. You know, the, the question really is, again, what came first? We're going to tell you which came first. But this is Webster. This is our spider from the spider book. And this is sort of about the story, but it's sort of about us. We retired. I've learned that retiring has nothing to do with having nothing to do. <laughs> We're busy a whole lot. But the, the truth of the matter is that, and, and, and these are our books. This is us. Again, the back of the house. It's the back of my garage. It's got all the characters all over the place. But we, we know now which came first. For us, what came first was hype, because that's where it all began. So thank you, Jonathan, for that. What this is, and I'm going to stop talking, you can just watch this begin to happen. Uh, this is an invention of garage. You might see outside there's a table with a video on it, and there's a wooden block set. Gary loves to work with concepts. He also loves to work with wood. He also likes to work with his son. So they together, Gary and his son, invented what they called Pangea violation. I came from the map world. You understand this, Rich. Um, the question is a map makers, how many colors do you need to have countries be different colors and never touch a country of the same color? So what this is, is you can build this thing either with uh, only yellows touching yellows and only greens touching greens, or you can have it so green never touches green, red never touches red. So he built this in wood and he said, I'm going to do this in height because I wanted to play. But each one of those squares is a 12 by 12 grid. So you've got 144 layers in there, and then they have to be grouped in various ways. So I spent a lot of time just playing with this. But again, you're dealing here with what, ul what ultimately is nearly 200 layers of stuff. So try to keep it under control. I sort of lost all vision here. I just put it together and said, I'm going to keep doing this. So it's still, it's still rough. But this is a description. Again, this is a text box that is part of height, stretched out, decided how long it should be, took Gary's definition of what it was going to be, and wanted to show it to you. So that's our story. It's real short. I have no background whatsoever in technology. Sue has no background in technology. My background was selling books a long time ago, <coughs> making maps. Hers was doing um, you know, uh, art for passion. And now we're animators, publishers, artists. Anybody in here, um, artists? You know, okay. So go and try it. Just play with it. But do it yourself. Don't get yourself into any kind of uh, copyright trouble, draw it yourself, believe in yourself, believe in yourself, and believe that you can do it because it's just a matter of plan. I'm looking at this plan, experiment. Uh, I'd be happy to, if I can be of any help as the kindergarten version of height, if I can be of any help to you guys starting up. Uh, there's cards of mine outside or grab me a long way if you have to tell you how I did it. It doesn't mean it's the right way to do it, but it's the way I did it. And I can only tell you, it's, it's really the most fun. I've had in my life. I'm just having a ball. So I would say, say take the hundred bucks out of your pocket and know this is the best investment that you ever did. So thanks for listening. Any questions?
Yes. Uh, she's got a cactus on her shirt. Hello. So do you tend to use Photoshop, Illustrator for all your artwork and then uh, export it? About four or five apps, drawing apps that I use. Um, I, I use um, Sketches. I use uh, Procreate, uh, Brushes. I go back and forth for, for different purposes. Some of the art apps are are very intricate and have uh, a lot of features, a lot of colors. You know, you can you know, manipulate some of them more than others. So I bounce around between a lot of different uh, possibilities of uh, art apps. Uh, I, I like to use. I need to use the transparency of. Uh, now you know why. She's now the girl with three iPads, you know, the first one and the second one, and the green one down there is a small version of the Pro, so that's why she can use the pencil. I have no technical graphic art background. It was just your typical canvas painting art illustration. That was my only background. And getting into the art apps was totally new for me, and that was, that I only started in 2000. Yes. How the book's selling? Well, I get this on the video, so send you a mic and you can do it. We've got about fifteen thousand pieces out there now, and it's not. We haven't. We've done zero. This is the entire corporation. This is the promotion department, the graphics department, the art department, the animation department, the iBooks building department. So this is the year of beginning to promote them. But just by putting them up, we're about fifteen thousand units. So we're not buying yachts yet. But we hope to change that somewhat this year because this is our social media department right here. Her, uh, her job is now beginning to shout about it. We just haven't had time to do much about it. So that's about where we are. But we're hoping to, you know, have great multiple. We're hoping to have that much every day pretty soon. We're not counting on it. And so I'm, I'm guessing right now your your products are available um, in the iBook store. Correct. If you type in my name, I'm officially the publisher of these things. I figure I'll stay with what I know. Uh, you'll get my book. There's one book called uh, Grapes in My Shower. It came because in my outdoor shower, I planted grapes. And I came out of it one day. There was grapes there. I said, Sue, there's grapes in my shower. And she said, that's a great title for your book. <coughs> so I wrote a book around the title. So if you'd like it, it's also up there. If you type in my name, you'll get my book, her book, Gary's book, simply because I'm the first as well. Uh, many of the books are on Amazon, but because Amazon doesn't give you the ability to have an animation, obviously, or sounds, you know, talking books, um, music, what, to me, what's the whole point of putting it on Amazon when you have all these other features? So they're there, but we don't even check to see what the numbers are. Probably zero. So anyway, uh, any more questions or we'll be around the rest of the day. Feel free to tackle us and ask questions or email us later on or look at the Facebook pages or just write to us if you like. Thank you for being here.